you have uh, also joined us in the past. Uh, just to recap, is, uh, this is a series of webinars that are uh, geared towards power plants and uh, just to give an opportunity for our clients in the power industry uh, to get to know us, what we do, what we provide, services we provide, and how we can help them assess and uh, manage their risk for the buried pipes. So just a quick recap on what Pure Technologies offers for the power plants. We are a global leader in the buried pipe risk management program. We've been doing this since 97. Uh, today we have a suite of patented technologies that we offer for the assessment of uh, condition assessment of pipelines, uh, be it concrete, uh, be it metallic, uh, be it non-metallic. Non um, the main technology that we have offered for the power plants, uh, as we find there's a lot of pre-stressed concrete pipe in power plants, is our electromagnetic inspection. Uh, particularly for power plants uh, that have got uh, intake and discharge water lines that form the critical uh, pipelines for their operations. And these pipes tend to be pre-stressed concrete pipes. Uh, we've also added engineering evaluation and today's topic, uh, the visual and sounding in conjunction with the electromagnetic is part of the engineering evaluation that we offer from our pure engineering services. And over the years, uh, Pure Technologies has evolved as a role of a trusted advisor. Um, we have engineering expertise, we have got inspection technologies. So together we offer a comprehensive solution to our clients to manage, to help them manage the risks and extend the life of the buried pipes. So the suite, just a quick uh, summary of the uh, services that we offer. The first one obviously is uh, the electromagnetic inspection. We've been doing that for over 15 years now. Uh, the visual and sounding inspection is something that uh, my colleague Ed is going to do, uh, you know, discuss a little bit more in details. Uh, the magnetic flux leakage is a technology that's been used in the oil and gas industry for a number of years and we now bring that technology uh, it's an enhanced version of uh, magnetic flux leakage that we offer for power plants, uh, particularly for your metallic pipes. Um, we've got some advanced robotic systems where we have bundled CCTV, laser, and sonar uh, sensors on them. Our um, tools for finding leaks in pipelines, we've got two patented technologies based on acoustics. One is the free swimming smart ball. And then the other one is the Sahara. Uh, last year I had uh, done a webinar just uh, discussing these two technologies in detail. And if there's any more information and it requires, there's a lot of information available on our website and uh, or they can uh, contact me at any time. The 24-7 acoustic monitoring is our fiber optic monitoring system suitable for long stretches of pipeline. This is an active monitoring program that is in installed in uh, pre-stressed concrete pipes that is uh, um, tuned to listen for any wire breaks. Any of these pre-stressing wires, when they break, they're releasing the acoustic energy or, and, and that is detected immediately and communicated through a DAC unit. And lastly, we have got the engineering services. It's a comprehensive suite of services uh, that we offer that also includes finite element analysis. At this point, I'll uh, hand over to my colleague, Ed uh, Paduski. Over to you, Ed. All right. Thanks, Anise. Um, so to get right into it, uh, what is PCCP? That's pre-stressed concrete cylinder pipe. Um, pre-stressed concrete cylinder pipe was introduced um, in the 1940s as a me means of saving the amount of steel required to create large transmission mains during World War II. It's a complex composite structure. Uh, it has a pre-stressing wire on the outside, providing the primary strength is the primary strength member, but the concrete truly carries the load. And they have, the pre-stressing wire is protected by a mortar coating on the outside that is, creates a passive alkaline environment and gives protection basically to the pre-stressed wire from any kind of uh, corrosion or um, damage from the environment around it. Two types of pre-stressed concrete cylinder pipe that we deal with most often would be a line cylinder pipe and embedded cylinder pipe. Uh, with regard to the line cylinder pipe, we have uh, inner concrete core with a steel cylinder that provides a, as a watertight membrane when the pre-stressing wires are wrapped directly onto the steel cylinder. Uh, the wires are then encapsulated in a mortar coating that's about three quarters inch thick 
I think the current standards require a minimum of five eighths inches over the wire, protecting the wires from any sorts of corrosion. With the embedded cylinder pipe, and so to the line cylinder pipe, this came into effect in the late 1950s. Uh, we have an inner concrete core and a steel cylinder that has an, and an outer concrete core. So the steel cylinder itself is encapsulated in concrete. And then the pre-stressing wire placed on the outside of that core, providing the compression, and once again, encapsulated in the mortar coating, protecting it from corrosion or any damage. The Failure mechanisms and deterioration of pre-stressed pipe primarily focuses on uh, the corrosion of the pre-stressing wires and or loss of pre-stressing. One of our primary concerns would be the aggressive external environment many of these pipelines are placed in. If you have soils that are groundwaters with high chlorides, high sulfide counts, uh, wetting and drying cycles where um, repetitively the uh, water flowing through the mortar coating. Um, a low pH um, allowing steel uh, to corrode, and then low soil resistivity. These are all issues that, that aren't found in the environment. Um, with regard to manufacturing deficiencies, if the pipe was manufactured with a poor coating, um, the coating can either delaminate from the wire, just comes off in sheets we would see, or maybe be, uh, have a high um, number of permeable voids um, or high absorption rates. This allows moisture or uh, water, groundwater to get through the mortar coating to the pre-stressing wire and start the uh, corrosion process. During the manufacturing process, if proper care wasn't or QAQC processes were not in place, um, we may have tight wire spacing. This results in a poor bond between the mortar coating and the pre-stressing wires. Uh, in time, that can create a, a zone that separates once again, allowing corrosion. Uh, other wrapping issues, which we'll get into a little bit more, would be um, bad wire placed on the pipe, um, whether or not the wire was breaking during the process, splices were not properly uh, made, um, or the proper compression is not provided to the pipe at the time when the pipe is completed being built. Um, the coating damage during uh, during improper pipeline operation is a, a big concern. Um, surge events that go through the pipeline can result at, in cracking of the mortar coating. Um, this may not show up at the time of the surge, but years down the road, after a surge has occurred, the lining has cracked, the environment is, and the corrosive environment can get to the wires, creating an area of broken wires, and then the second surge or a later surge may result in a failure. Additional issues that we come across would be ex excessive loading on the outside, whether it is uh, excessive truck traffic or uh, even excessive earth loads over the pipe can result in cracking at the uh, top and bottom of the pipe and lead to damage and failure. Examples of what we're talking about with regard to uh, other failures and uh, breakdowns of the pipe, we're looking at poor installation processes. If you install the pipeline on a very rocky bedding like we see in the photograph on the left there where you end up with point loading or any kind of damage under the pipe that in time leads to failure. You could have aggressive soils that will be eating up the coating like in the middle photograph or we could actually end up with third party da damage. Um, what tends to happen is especially in the case like directional drilling or any kind of uh, boreholing a contractor may uh, bump into the pipeline not knowing it's there, believing it's a rock and just hit it multiple times until they get through and they bust a hole straight through the uh, lining of the pipe. In this case it was repaired immediately afterwards with a wooden stake which in time is corroding and could lead to failure. Big issues with pre-stressing wire occurred in the 1970s. Uh, Interpace created what was known as Class 4 wire from 1972 to 1979. That led to the understanding of hydrogen embrittlement issues with high strength wire. Um, basically, during the manufacturing process, they tried to create a higher strength steel wire, which worked for the most part in reducing the amount of steel required in the manufacturing process. However, it was a very brittle um, wire. Minimal amount of corrosion is, or any kind of onset of corrosion. 
will result in fracturing or splitting of the pre-stressing wires. As we show in the photographs here, the wires can split or be uh, broken with almost no corrosion product present whatsoever. Um, in addition to the wires being manufactured incorrectly, we could have uh, cathodic protection systems put onto the pipelines that are improper, not properly operating. As a result, um, additional uh, voltage going through the system can in, end up in the wires breaking as well. Same type deal where you just lose your ductility and end up failing with very little corrosion. And another issue we come across would be stray currents from crossing gas lines or other uh, utilities where stray currents from those protected systems end up on the pre-stress pipe and fail the wire. Um, our concern, of course, will also be with regard to joint leaks. Well, we're not really concerned too much maybe with regard to water loss. The concern would be that the water flowing through a joint or a leak can lead to uh, deterioration of the mortar coating and accelerate the corrosion process. Um, the mortar could get literally sandblast or water blasted away from the steel, allowing it to be exposed to the uh, environment and would corrode. This is usually due to either movement of the pipe due to settlement if improper bedding was in place at the time of uh, installation, um, a de deficiency in the design um, without placing proper resistance or thrust restraint at elbows or um, valves, keys or the like, to allow the pipe to uh, expand down the line. If an inferior joint was, uh, materials were used, if bad gaskets were used, if uh, any kind of welding issues may have occurred between the joint ring and the steel cylinder, that could all lead to leaks at the um, ends of the pipes. And then, of course, there's installation deficiencies. If uh, the pipe wasn't properly homed and in time the, the mortar wore, wore out and the gasket no longer could keep uh, everything watertight, or if during the process the gasket was rolled, we could end up with leaks down the road, which would deteriorate the pipe. So with, our guard, with regard to our internal inspection program, we want to make sure we get into the project management to begin with. Uh, typically, what Pure Technologies would do, we would assign a project manager to a job, make sure they work with the client, understand what the expectations are, uh, create a plan and a schedule for how to go about it, and of course, address the uh, safety concerns. The project manager would be a, basically a team leader who would review, like we show on the right here, whether it be a plan or profile of the pipeline, if a laying schedule is available, or look at the specifications to know exactly what we're inspecting. We want to find out where all the manholes, low points, and dewatering issues may be, where outlets could occur, uh, inline valves, anything we may cross, um, set up top support or traffic control as necessary, and make sure the line is uh, locked out and tagged out prior to the start of any inspection program. Um, a big issue with regard to most power plants would be security clearance. We have been involved with a few uh, inspections through the years. We may understand that pre-screening is very important prior to the arrival at a power plant. Um, we make sure we do thorough background checks on all of our employees prior to setting up the job. Um, in addition, we are all, all of our employees are certified in confined space entry, and they're also trained with rope rescue training uh, to ensure we can do self-rescues in, in case, of, case of emergencies or uh, if we have to go up or down slopes of any sort, we have the ability to do all this in-house. Uh, however, we do understand that additional on-site training may be required, so we're quite uh, aware that we can show up at site and be going, having to go through a power plant's individual training program. Getting back to the pre-stress pipe and indicators of distress, primarily pre-stress fails as a result of broken pre-stressing wires. Uh, loss of pre-stress or a loss of compression in the concrete core leads to the failure. Um, this is usually due to corrosion of the pre-stressing wires or an eventual breakage. Um, what you would normally see is the cracks or delaminations in the mortar coatings as a result of either surge events or bad coatings or whatever it may be. That will lead it, uh, to longitudinal cracking in the inner or outer core in the case of uh, uh, embedded cylinder pipe and line cylinder you would see the cracking in the inner core only. 
Um, in the embedded cylinder pipe, we'd find hollow sounding in the inner cores along with the cracks, indication of the separation of the cylinder from both the inner and outer core. We're also uh, looking for excessive joint displacement, um, which could lead to corrosion of the joint ring if the mortar coating has uh, been removed, or um, leaking of the joints if the space is moved, or the space is large enough, or the gasket is moved. So our basic internal inspections that we provide would be electromagnetic inspections, um, like using the robot in the uh, left corner there or a pipe diver for free, free swimming school. We also have manned tools that could go through. Or we would do visual inspections only on a line cylinder pipe, a, a smaller diameter pipe. So line cylinder pipes typically go up to about 42 or 48 inches. Uh, pipes about 48 inches and larger are typically embedded cylinder pipe, where we do both visual and sounding inspection on those lines. For the electromagnetic inspection tools, um, Pure Technologies provides um, multiple options here, whether it's a fully dewatered line where we could do what is called the pipe walker tool. These are for pipes three feet in diameter and larger. We, it's a manned system. We'd walk through the line to try to find electromagnetic anomalies. If the pipe is uh, excavated, we could use our pipe scanner tool, which would pinpoint the location of those anomalies. Um, pipes that cannot be uh, depressurized but can be dewatered, um, we can use a robotic system that will allow us to do electromagnetic as well as a um, visual inspection using the HDV or a sonar or laser mapping of the line. For lines that cannot be taken out of service, we have a free swimming tool called the pipe diver that would be able to go into pipelines two inches in diameter, uh, two feet in diameter and larger. One thing to know about our electromagnetic inspections, um, Basically, if you go down the length of a pipe, as we show here, going from joint to joint, like in number seven, the signals um, as a result of the, just the, simply the physics involved with regard to the electromagnetic uh, inspections, um, it is much more difficult to evaluate data where the thicker steel exists in the joint rings compared to the barrel of the pipe. If you look at the green and red lines, you have consistency where there are no wire breaks through the barrel of the point pipe so when you get to the joints, there's a little bit of uh, change in the signal. Um, this is what we'll be focusing on with regard to our visual and sounding inspections. We're trying to find if there's any kind of issues at the ends of the pipes that may have been masked um, by the sur uh, survey equipment cannot detect. So with regard to the man visual and sounding inspections, um, we're looking to identify problems with the joints not addressed by the electromagnetics. We're trying to find pipes in the state of incipient failure. Uh, we're looking for non-wire break related items. Overloading with the result in cracking at the crown or the invert, whether it's uh, excessive earth loads or uh, dead loads. And during the whole process, we provide an accurate laying schedule. So this is important for clients who do not know exactly what pipes are in the ground, what kind of specials they may have, uh, where outlets may be, where elbows may be exactly. We can map all that out for them. Well, this is a re kind of a repeat. When we to say incipient failure, we're looking for pipes similar to what we see on the right photo there with a large amount of damage, which most likely would be failing within the next year to two years. It, typically, this means that the bulk of the pre-stressing wires on the outside have uh, been broken, or a large number, I should say, of wires on the exterior have been broken, and the pipe is expanding and is beyond its elastic limit and is near failure. When we're looking for uh, the joints during our internal inspection program, we're going to be looking at either patches in the linings where it may be spongy or looking like they're not doing the proper job of protecting the steel. Uh, we could have initial areas where corrosion, I mean, uh, deterioration or spalling of the joint mortar or adjacent linings would be happening. Uh, more advanced versions of this would be large areas of spalling that are just the deterioration continu continuing over time. The spalling can eventually lead to the point where the steel cylinder is exposed, and then corrosion of the steel cylinder may lead to pitting and leaking through the cylinder versus leaking through the joint. Uh, larger areas of corrosion where the cylinder has had corrosion product uh, forming, and then large areas of corrosion and deterioration where uh, immediate repair is necessary. With regard to hollow areas or longitudinal cracking, 
we go out, you know, once again, we're concentrating at the joint ends as well as in the barrel, um, marking things out, trying to find out where the damage may be. We would mark out our areas. Areas could be as small as about a couple of inches longitudinally to two to three feet in length. You could have cracks along the invert or long longitudinal cracks with staining. The staining is usually the result of the concrete core expanding and the cement leaching out of the concrete at that location. One thing to note, though, the size of the crack doesn't necessarily represent exactly how much damage it is. It's more a result of experience and seeing what we're, where the crack is located, the shape of it, and any kind of feature around it. In this case, we had a very faint crack down the length of the pipe. It was about uh, 51 inches in length. There was a large hollow area associated with that that measured 58 inches longitudinally and 78 inches circumferentially. When we recommended excavation, the outside of the pipe was basically falling apart with over six feet of damage and broken wires. So this just goes to show that just because there is a longitudinal crack that may be faint, it may not be uh, something not to be concerned with. Additional to the visual and sounding inspection, we also try to find other unique items in the pipe that may not be known. In some cases, we come across outlets or manholes or any type of flanges that were patched over. Um, the client never knowing that they were in the ground. Uh, there may be liner pieces in the line that were sealed that are no longer doing their job and need to be replaced. Or in the case of power plants, we look at the interface between the end of the pipeline and the beginning of the cooling tower or any other structure, and we could document on the condition there and recommendations for repair. We also come across wide variety of additional items in, during our internal inspections, whether it's uh, piles of rock, uh, hoses from the pumps that were used during the previous internal inspection, the cable or wires that go along with that, and sometimes, like in this case here, ladders left in from the time of manufacture. In this case, it was a 12-foot ladder and a 5-foot uh, diameter pipe. So for our internal inspection process, we have a person go along with a larger diameter pipe with a sounding rod banging on the pipe trying to find out where the core is separating. Uh, we'll have a distance wheel going along marking out whatever we may find. If there is a hollow area, the person who didn't use a lat hammer to find out the exact extent of it. Um, oops. Sorry. An example of what we're looking for with a hollow area. You hear the change in pitch during the hammering, with the, and that shows where the concrete core has expanded away from the cylinder. We then map out exactly what we have, measure it all, prepare for our reporting, photograph uh, wherever the damage may be, and then track it with our uh, internal tools. We're currently working off uh, iPads to collect all our data. Um, this is our next version of our app that we'll be using. We basically track from manhole 5.0 and along every pipe is uh, accounted for. We have our beginning and end distances, any distress we may find in the pipe, what can be found with regard to our features. We are able to keep track of all this in our iPad now so that we can pr provide a complete and accurate lane schedule when we're done. This would then go pipe by pipe, put it together. We have, if we have an idea of how many pipes should be in a stretch, we lay it out beforehand and then this just confirms the pipes and the outlets and any kind of specials we may come across, as well as marking off pipes of concern. Um, many of our clients have used carbon fiber repairs in the past to repair damaged pipe. We're, we have more experience now with regard to both the installation, overseeing the installation of carbon fiber repairs, as well as inspecting them after they've been uh, completed years ago. Primary concern, of course, is at the joints where they may have separation or cracking going on of the carbon fiber to the existing pipe. Concern would be that the watertight membrane that was installed no longer is watertight if there's a problem at the joints. So we're looking for separation or movements at these joints. Uh, we would go through with a hammer, try to find out any kind of uh, deterioration or spalling, separating, you name it. Uh, big concern would be separating of the layers of the carbon fiber or separating the carbon fiber from the concrete core if it was designed to be uh, a composite type repair. Um, similar to the inspection, 
of an embedded cylinder pipe. We do the same thing with a rubber mallet, banging on the pipe, trying to find any of these locations. And once again, we mark out, here's an area of concern, give you the dimensions and pass this back onto the utility so or the power plant so they can let the uh, installer of the cotter fiber repair know there's something they have to address. When it's all complete, we finish our inspection, we put together uh, a complete table of findings that came off our uh, iPad, let you know what we observed in, at the first joint, what we observed at the second joint, and exactly what's going on in the barrel of every pipe. We do this for every stick, and we'll have a complete, like I said, laid schedule that's all done. When it's done, a report and engineering will go out to the client, whoever it may be. Uh, one thing to note, oh, in addition to our uh, reporting, we've been involved with quite a few power plants just in the last year. We've formed six different power plants uh, from the northeast down to Florida, as far west as Utah. Uh, one thing that we note, we've been inspecting pipelines with electromagnetics and visual and sounding for over 20 years. Electromagnetics for 10 years and over 20 years for visual and sounding inspections. We have a pretty large uh, library of data. One thing we've learned in most water mains, there's no damage in about 96% of the pre-stressed pipe, uh, with only less than 1% of those in a state of failure need to be repaired. Um, power plants tend to be a little bit more than this. We have a higher um, frequency of damaged pipes. Typically in the discharge mains, we find more damage, um, but it's not much greater than this. It's really dependent on the pipeline, how it's been handled, and how it was designed. Um, with that, I'm willing to turn to questions if we have any, um, or be willing to go back and review anything. Great. Thanks, Ed. At this time, you can use your raise your hand on the uh, GoToWebinar platform there, or feel free to type your questions in the uh, chat window. I'm just going to go to the uh, questions here. Uh, we've got one that's come in. It says. So is there a need to do both uh, the visual and sounding type of inspection or along with the electromagnetic inspection? Is there a need to really do both of them? Um, yes, we find that the visual and sounding inspection will find all the defects, primarily um, pipes that are about to fail, but anything that is going on at the joint, whether or not there's corrosion going on at the joint rings, separation going on at the joint rings, or if there could be damage that the physics won't allow you to recognize through the electromagnetic survey at the pipe ends. Uh, we feel that the two services really do complement themselves and make the most sense to do in conjunction with each other. Okay, uh, I see someone has their hand raised here. I'm just going to unmute Simon. Simon, are you there? Is it me? Yeah. Can I speak? Oh, yeah, this is a pretty good I'm going to be side uh, Listen. You guys were uh, doing a hammer sounding inside the pipe. Uh, that was a uh, steel cast. The pipe or that we were no everything we were showing here was in a pre-stressed concrete cylinder pipe. Okay, uh, so you have hammer sounding, and you you said you detect um, hollow hollow sound, right? Yes. And you you're marking those areas, but is there any other way other than that to find out what the extent of damage would be? from the inside without going and removing all the cover? Because all you're doing is just finding the area where the, this, the hollow sound exists and marking it up, right? Correct. It's about the the moving the intent damage? Are you asking to verify what the damage would be on the outside from the inside? Yeah, yeah like where the VLAN stops. Um, the best we could do with regard to our um, combination of visual and sound and electromagnetic um, inspections, we could give you the what we believe are the extents of this damage on the inside of the pipe. There's no perfect tool to try to determine what is going on outside of the pipe with regard to the exact number of broken wraps. However, right. when we find those hollow areas where the concrete core has expanded and cracked and are separated from the cylinder, it's usually a direct result of uh, a significant number of broken wraps on the outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing we do provide is um, we can do finite element analysis or structural modeling let you know how large or how much damage is acceptable before the pipe would fail. Right. Um, 
usually by the time we find these hollows though, we consider that failure of the pipe, it just hasn't ruptured. Oh. But no, there's no other way to um, detect the outside of the pipe from the inside other than the tools that we provide really. Right. So another question, you know, when I looked at that photograph you were doing hammer sounding, you can see the the uh, the full reinforcing. It's like, do you see those? Want to go right to it? I'm sorry, I'll go. Which? Yeah. Uh, back, back. Not this one. Not this one. Was it during this this video you're talking about, or? In your presentation, there was one slide where you could see the hoop, hoop reinforcing from the inside. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, I, I don't believe like, that was the case. It. it may have just been. Because I've seen something like this before on a bridge girder too. Like you can see the markings where the hoop reinforcing is. It's like a, like a grayish lines, radial lines from the inside. No, well, not in the case of pre-stressed pipe. Uh, what you would have on the inside is your mortar coating or inner lining, I should say. I'll show you the. I'm not sure what you're uh, referring to in the presentation. So it's kind of but. like there is a color, right? So, but you can so see if, those. If you look at my, my pictures here. Let's say for the yeah. lower right corner, you're going to be looking on the inside, which would be the bottom face of that embedded cylinder pipe drawing. You then have the okay. concrete, and then you have a steel cylinder there. Your reinforcement uh -huh. is on the outside of your outer core. Okay. So you will be able to see all the way through that from the inside to the out. Okay. So I don't know. One of the slides, I'm sorry? Like, it looked different from one of the slides. I thought I saw those radial rings. Uh, like in, darkening around those radial rings, but I thought you had steel. No, these are all, this is just at the joints here. This uh, is a person that's, uh, it's all s continuous lining uh, that is cracking, so it's all poured concrete on the inside. Right, and the next? That's right. the outside of the pipe. Right. This is a, this is a repair that was a steel liner that was placed w using uh, Wico seals to hold it in place. Uh, so this is, in a, this is a special situation that we came across. Okay. This is the um, beginning of a, um, the cooling ch tower. Okay. It's a pile of debris, a hose. Are you talking about something like this here? Uh, this one doesn't look like... No. That is an adapter that uh, all the mortar, hand placed mortar, had fallen off of yeah. and was corroding. Oh. This is the video. So that's the sound that a hollow would make yeah. where the lining so is separate. I'm sorry. You've got you've got concrete cover and a steel casing, and you hear the hollow, hollow sound, yeah, on the concrete. Yes. So so you so from from your perspective, is that just delamination between debonding between the steel and concrete from the inside? Yes. Um, now, the debonding, depending on what we find in uh, just being involved with this as long as we have. There are other reasons why you may come across that kind of sound. If it was a drying shrinkage issue, if we come across seams in the cylinders, things like that may give us false indications, but usually we know what we're looking for. We've been doing it quite, for some quite time here. So this is a, a indication of where the concrete core has expanded under pressure. Once the pressure is let off the line, the core shrinks back down, but the cylinder has already been deformed. And now you have a void between your concrete core and your deformed cylinder that passed the elastic limit for the steel. Right. So, so if so, if it is, is there a possibility that water can get in behind and and start damaging the steel? Yeah, but to be honest with you, in the higher pressure lines, and depending on the lining you have, water can get there regardless. Your steel cylinder is designed to be a watertight membrane, but it's going to be without any kind of oxygen and the protective qualities of the concrete should still be against still so you don't see too much in the way of corrosion mm -hmm. or deterioration from the inside out as a result of it being wet. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another question here from Harold. I'm going to unmute your line. Please go ahead. Yes, um, with the additional repairs and inspections that y'all have done, 
have you got any better insight as to the service life? For example, does the embedded wire seem to last longer, or are we still uh, have we come up with much of a view of what the uh, remaining service life seems to be, or is it uh, very site specific? Um, yeah, unfortunately, it is very site specific. Especially what we have recognized is typically closer to cooling towers and all, where you may have a uh, wetting and drying cycles uh, or any kind of salt water spraying on it or anything like that, you tend to have the pipes break down a little bit earlier. In general, the, we have come across pipes, we've been inspecting pipes that were put in the ground in the 50s that look in very good condition. We don't see any kind of deterioration whatsoever. So we're looking at over 50 years of life and a lot of times we're still telling our clients that uh, repairing a handful here or there or doing minor repairs or re-inspections you can get away with another 15, 20, sometimes 25 years, um, as many of them are found in very good condition after all the time that they were in service. This is even true with our class four wire issues. If the coating was properly, if you had the bad wire, good coating, and a non-aggressive environment that the pipeline's sitting in, we have come across plenty of those pipelines that have zero damage on them as well. So, sure, thank you, thank you. Okay, we have a, another question here uh, in, from the chat area. Um, have you had any inspection experience with resin epoxy liners failing? And if so, what were the most common problems? Resin epoxy liners? No. Uh, other, I mean, we've, the only thing we've seen with re, internal repairs have been um, the carbon fiber cracking at the joints of the hem is really only on the first handful of repairs. Most of them that have been done as of the last like four or five years have been in very good condition when we go back into them. Uh, and we've had issues with um, some utilities or power plants using different type of mortar or different type of uh, epoxies in their joints rather than using mortar. And it doesn't seem to hold up as well as it should. And a lot of times that falls out. But our, experience has been relatively limited with anything outside of those type of uh, applications. Uh, Norman and Isia, just to, just to um, add to that, so um, there have been instances where the liners um, have debonded from the host pipe and, um, and I think that's more an issue of uh, the surface prep or the lack of surface prep at the time of liner installation. And uh, over a period of time, the, um, the bond between the liner and the host pipe uh, led to some kind of problem delamination, and then the liner came off. So those those instances are rare, but they have been uh, reported. Okay, we have another question here. Um, how often should we have a, a visual and sounding type of inspection? Um. What we try to recommend to do, it depends on what the first one finds, obviously. If you go through a pipeline and you have a, a fair amount of damage and maybe not enough time to repair all of it or a, a lot of pipes with a small amount of damage and only a couple with more damage, we would like to see maybe during every outage to go back. The time that it's required, we usually can inspect up to a mile of pipeline doing a visual and sounding almost any diameter in the course of a day. Um, so if the line can be easily dewatered during a shutdown, we could be in and out of there one day, let you know where your damage is um, at a relatively low cost compared to the shutdown uh, cost involved. So if at all possible, every outage, um, just to make sure the pipe is holding up and not deteriorating. Okay. Uh, next question here is, I, I don't see the iPad app on your website download area. Is it available as a standalone product? <laughs> no, that's a proprietary item that only we have and we do not share. So it was just something that we were doing in-house that we, uh, the app itself is uh, something just that we are using and I don't believe anyone else in the world has it to be honest with you. Okay, and the last question right now is um, what do you provide for rehab options? Uh, what exactly does Pure get involved with there? We've been involved with external repairs of all sorts, whether it be uh, concrete encasement of the lines, external tenant repairs, or overseeing the replacement of individual pipe sticks. 
We've also been involved with internal repairs. Um, very common nowadays would be doing the internal inspection, uh, internal repairs using carbon fiber. Right now, Pure Technologies, I think, has been involved with over 200 internal carbon fiber repairs. Um, with regard to the external, going back to external work, we will do the design of a repair, whether it's with tenons, concrete encasement, or replacement. Uh, with regard to internal repairs, we provide uh, design checks. Usually the manufacturer provides the design, or the installer will provide the design. We will check the design for them, and we provide on-site supervision of the installation of the repair. Okay, uh, last chance for questions. I don't see any more raised hands, so at that time I would like to say uh, thank you everyone for joining. Um, the recording of this webinar will be made available and we will also be sending some uh, follow-up information on future webinar series. Thank you so much and have a good day. Thank you everybody. Thank you.